This episode is brought to you by the Weather Channel app. Did you know the app can help you forecast more than just the weather? With allergy tracking and flu risk mapping. So you know when to stay inside and load up on podcasts. As well as air quality and UV indexing. So you know when to get outside, load up on sunscreen and podcast. Forecast more of what you love with the Weather Channel app. You're listening to the Food Heals Podcast. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. What are aminos and why are they vitally important for plant-based dieters? How does building muscle help us age in reverse? What are Keon aminos and why are they essential to our health? These questions and more answered with CEO of Keon, Angelo Keeley, on today's episode of Food Heals. Angela was born in Austin, Texas, and was raised on a foundation of organic, mostly vegetarian whole foods, plus an array of supplements. In his teens, after being stabbed and left for dead, he woke up in the hospital with a completely new outlook on life. He was not going to let this setback defeat him and destroy his life. Angelo dove headfirst into science, nutrition, meditation, yoga, breathwork, cold and hot therapy, acupuncture, and learned about the body's innate ability to heal itself. Once he was healed, he had a dream, with the dream of building the healthiest and most inspiring work culture at the heart of a fast-growth consumer products company, Angelo co-founded Keon in 2017 in Boulder, Colorado. Keon offers premium, clean, research-backed supplements and foods with a focus on aminos as the building block of health to support your long, happy, and active life. If you enjoyed today's episode and you want to get 20% off your Keon supplements and aminos, you can save 20% off at getkeon.com slash foodheals. I've been taking the Keon aminos for about a month and a half, probably almost two months now, and I can feel and see the difference. All right, let's jump right into the interview. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. He is the co-founder and CEO of Keon, an active lifestyle supplement and functional food company. Please welcome Angelo Keeley to the show. Welcome, Angelo. Thanks for having me, Allison. I'm psyched to be here. I'm so happy to have you. I may or may not be sipping on some mango aminos right now. Oh, good. Awesome. I just had some mango. Well, yeah, that's my favorite flavor. Um, And aminos is one of those topics that we haven't like really covered in depth on Food Heals. So that's one of the reasons I'm very excited to have you on with us today. And I know that you say that aminos were one of the most important supplements that your mom gave to you as a kid. So I'd love if you could take us back to where this all began. Where did your passion for wellness start? Well, it, I, yeah, it really started with my mom and my dad. They were uh, health food entrepreneurs. Um, mm. They started in the, my dad started in the supplement business really with botanicals, so herbs. Oh, cool. Um, like importing herbs from uh, from Korea, primarily ginseng and, and other countries. And then they were in the natural health food business, the natural health food store and natural health food restaurant. And so that's really like the family I was born into, pretty crunchy hippie family um, right outside of Austin, <laughs> Texas. I was born at home in a little town called Wimberley. And we were vegetarian slash pescatarians. So we ate some fish, but we primarily a vegetarian diet. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I just grew up on, I, I didn't go to a doctor until, I didn't go to a doctor or get a birth certificate until I started first grade. Like I had to do that to go to first grade. Um, so This is so amazing. You're like <laughs> the literal OG of wellness. People that grew up like you, I'm so jealous of, and that's how I want to raise my family. But it's like, I grew up the complete opposite, like not in a trashy way, but just like we ate whatever was put on the table. Like there was no conscious awareness of health. We drank Coke for dinner, you know? So it was just a completely different, we were the standard American diet people. And I went to the standard American doctor. So I love stories like yours. This was ingrained (laughs) in you since diapers. Yeah, really like from the early, and I didn't, you know, I don't think I knew that there was another way until I went to first grade and I realized I was the only kid with like a grilled 
tofu sandwich on like whole wheat like right. the equivalent of like Ezekiel bread back then <laughs> yeah, and yeah. everyone else had like gushers and was eating like uh chicken tenders um but yeah it's it's a cool it's I'm, I'm grateful it was a really unique upbringing and um yeah I mean the first supplement I remember my mom giving to me was amino acids and wow part of that was because they they did think a, a lot about protein nutrition. You know, I think for people that choose to be um, have more plant based or vegetarian diet, um, because plants are just they're not as rich in certain essential amino acids. It's helpful to think a little bit more about your protein nutrition, and um, so they did. And we talked about that. We talked about different types of plant combining. You know, to get a good um, complete protein in our diet, and. Um, my parents, primarily my mom was a pretty active athlete. She was a master swimmer. Like I went to the gym with her like every single day. Like that was like my daycare <laughs> was, wow. was going to the gym. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And she would like, uh, give me, she would take amino acids and she'd give them to me. And I remember her saying like, can't you feel them, Angie? Um, and I could Aww. like, they're actually one of those things that you can feel not like, um, you know, not like you feel like a stimulant, like a drug, but it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty amazing how they, how much better they can make you feel so quickly. And so, yeah, I mean, it, it started at that early of an age for me, just being ingrained in that. That said, you know, I think like you mentioned, probably your journey to health is very different, right? When you're not brought up in that and you maybe have issues later in life, you can turn to it as this like more like novel thing, whereas you almost just take it for granted if you're mm -hmm. brought up in it. Right. And I don't even think I realized how cool it was and what it meant until later in my life when I started to have like my own struggles and had health issues that it like finally became more like my journey, not just the thing that my parents, you know, told me about. Right. Um, and then you're like, oh, I have tools for this. Yeah. Like, oh, my parents, they were actually cooler than I thought. Yeah, <laughs> like, they were so cool. <laughs> in my opinion, yeah. anyways. Okay, so you grew up in this super wellness family, and then what happened at 16 years old? So yeah, like I was saying, you know, I think I didn't, I didn't really realize, you know, what what health was in this context. But naturally, too, like I go to school, my parents are entrepreneurs. I I was kind of in a in a brought up in a family that was very untraditional and. Like we were inclined to be successful, but like on our own terms and like push all the boundaries and try everything yourself. It was not like I wasn't like brought up to like you, you should go to like college and become a banker. You know, like it was yeah, very yeah. much like <laughs> try everything. And so, you know, by the time I get in high school, I'm very social. I'm trying lots of drugs. I'm like experimenting. I'm getting in lots of trouble. And I, I unfortunately, when I'm 16, well, I don't know. Unfortunately, it, it, it changed the rest of my life in a very positive way. Ultimately, mm -hmm. I took way too much LSD. Mm -hmm. I had, I think what they call now, or what I would call now a psychotic break. I don't know, maybe plant <laughs> plant medicine journey. People would say I had an ego death, but I went like, you know, I lost myself and mm -hmm. became very scared and um, was in not the right neighborhood and un unintentionally provoked people who are much more hardcore than me. And they, they beat me up really badly. Like my whole mm -hmm. body covered black and blue and stabbed me twice oh in the God. back to where I had to have emergency abdominal surgery and stabbed me in the knee, severed my patella tendon, um, had to have it reattached. And you know, that I woke up a week later in the hospital, um, very traumatized yeah, I mean, mentally, yeah. emotionally, physically. And that, you know, that became the beginning of my journey, not just to like, heal myself and to help rebuild you know, what I had lost, I think elements of like my, my sanity, my confidence, but even just like my, the, you know, my body functioning, being able to walk, being able to run, being able to play sports again. And, um, yeah, it really, it opened me up to, yeah, not just like the faith of my parents and wellness, but like my mm -hmm. own version of that, of understanding how important protein and amino acids were understanding maybe the benefits of acupuncture and and going to the chiropractor and, and cold therapy and exercise and like all these things that I just didn't know how valuable they were before. And they became this like key part of my life and really the beginning of like my, my wellness journey that I've been on yeah. now for over 20 years. How terrifying. I can't even imagine waking up in the hospital and you were probably like, where am I and what happened to me? Like, did you have any memory or clue when you woke up? Yeah. I mean, I think I felt I remember being terrified. 
yeah. uh, before <laughs> before I got like blacked out from the whole experience. I remember being terrified. And so I think just, you know, the, the terrible dream of the terror of it being over was a relief, but you know, but I was like, I couldn't move. I was so, so, so injured and sore. Um, and it was, it was like a wake. Yeah. I don't know if it was like waking up from a dream or like waking up into a dream because it felt so new and different. Like yeah. it was, I was changed. You know, I was never the same kid that I was before after going right. through that. Like I, 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 I wasn't the 16 year old I was before. Suddenly I had been like, uh, dosed in adulthood. Yeah, <laughs> like, really? Yeah. I've been <laughs> given like, you know, 20, 30, 40 years of life, like all in this one night that just, uh, you know, I don't think, and I don't think a person that age can just suddenly mature through, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. even if you're given this really deep experience, like, whoa, I, I was shocked. Yeah. What a shock to the body and the mind. And so what was your healing journey like from that? I know you mentioned like you discovered all of these holistic healing tools, but most people, especially at 16, really don't. So what did you find in healing your body and healing your mind that was extra effective that helped you get through that time? I mean, I was lucky to be in a place like Austin, Texas, that is, uh, I think, more progressive from a health perspective and just had a lot of a lot of resources. And, um, you know, I think at that time, you know, one of the things that had a pretty big impact on me, I actually think was acupuncture, which is not something I still do much of now, but I think my nervous system was so intensely, like just overstimulated. Uh, but I did, I started doing talk therapy, which I've continued to do for like 20 years. And it's definitely been a way for me to take sensations, uncomfortable feelings in my body and, and, you know, try to turn them into words. And through that process, like find balance, meditation and yoga and breath work became really, really, really important to me for the next few years. Uh, and then I think, you know, at just the most fundamental level, um, nutrition, like realizing Mm -hmm. that what I put into my body multiple times a day was going to have a direct impact on my emotional state. And I started to learn more about how, amino acids within protein are, are the thing, their metabolites are what become my neurotransmitters. My emotions actually come from these proteins. And so the wow. degree to which I nurture myself and provide myself with these raw nutrients that I ultimately need to, to have a balanced mood is going to be pretty crucial for how I feel over the course of a day, hour by hour, but then also like week to week and, and over the course of a year. And so just being really thoughtful about what I put in my body and, um, learning and studying about that and building perspective and reading a lot like it it um yeah really changed uh how i thought about my days and and it was it was crucial to my healing wow yeah i mean it's like nutrition is so important when it comes to healing not to mention the emotions but are you eating inflammatory foods that are inflaming your body and causing the injuries to stick around longer or are you eating healing foods that help your body restore and repair and heal itself. So that is just so important when it comes to healing. Absolutely. And I know you're here because you're, you started Keon and that's all about the aminos, which is very important to helping people like you who are healing from an injury at that time, people like me who who are vegan or other people like vegetarians. Can you talk a little bit about why these aminos are so important for people like me, vegans, people like you, somebody who was in a traumatic, had a traumatic injury and needs to heal the body. Talk to me about why supplementing with aminos is so important and how it works. The, the best place to start is with understanding what protein is and what protein is inside of us and what protein is outside of us, because that's okay. really um, like kind of the, the, the fundamental base of knowledge important for understanding what, what amino acids are. So there are three, you know, major macronutrients that we're aware of carbohydrates, fat, and protein. And and the primary role, I'm saying macronutrients, there's obviously lots of micronutrients, you know, Mm -hmm. unique minerals and vitamins, but of those macronutrients, the carbohydrates and fat, their primary role is to basically be burned. It's like gasoline. And we, we put it inside of our body and it is raw fuel that we use to actually, um, we convert it into this thing called ATP and it's what helps us move our muscles. It what beats our heart, allows us to breathe, et cetera. It's, it's kind of the most, um, 
accessible source of energy to be um, to be utilized by our body. And the role of protein is quite different, actually. Um, you mm -hmm. can use protein for that purpose, but the primary role of protein is actually to help rebuild our bodies. So think about it more like if carbohydrates and fat are like the gasoline, like imagine you have a car and it's getting old and like the door is falling off or the seat needs to get repaired. Uh -huh. You actually consume protein to help rebuild those pieces or those parts of the car. And it's, oh, I've never heard it said that way. Okay. Uh -huh. you know, it's really fundamentally different. And so like, well, why is that? How does that work? Well, in our bodies, you know, many people are familiar with the idea that over 50% of us is water, which is, which okay. is correct. It's even more than that. Well, of the part that's not water, the part that's like solid mass, hard physical, and you're not liquid, mm -hmm. over half of that is made up of proteins. So when you get outside of like bones, right, and mineral um, minerals in your body, you start thinking about like your all of your vital organs, your muscles, your skin, your hair, your eyes, your nails, um, but even things like hormones, enzymes, and as I said earlier. Uh, the neurotransmitters in our brain are the metabolites of proteins. Mm -hmm. So all of these are made up of proteins. And the way that proteins function in our body is they don't just last forever. They actually have only like a certain life to them before they get old and they have to basically be refreshed. And that, that process is called protein turnover. And it exists okay. in all the proteins in our body, whether it's okay. in my liver or it's my skin or it's muscle you know, any, any part of any protein in my body. And what happens is the protein, as it gets old and it wants to become more functional, the body wants to be more functional, it breaks apart. And when it breaks apart, what you discover is that there's these 20 amino acids, these little building blocks of the protein. Okay. And some of them, again, are old and can't be reused. So they get converted into urea and, and you pee them out. And you're left with okay. some of the remaining amino acids that help build up that previous protein. Mm -hmm. And so now you need to rebuild the protein. Like let's, you know, like your heart tissue needs to be rebuilt. So the way that you rebuild it is you need new, a new source of amino acids in your body. And the way that every you day. get every day, every day. Okay. And the, yeah. And the way that you get those, actually what I would, what I would say is technically every few hours. Oh, okay. So how how often do I need to be drinking these aminos that you sent me? Okay, we'll, <laughs> well get to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like there's different amounts and it's like, I'm not trying to say you need to be taking it every few hours, but 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 I'll get to that in a second. Like, okay. yeah, every few hours, if you don't consume, here, actually, this, I'll cut right to it. If you don't consume amino acids via protein or some type of supplement every few hours, mm -hmm. your body needs more new amino acids than it has to help rebuild the proteins in your body. Okay. And so what does it do? It spares proteins from the one place in your body that it can spare it. And okay. that place is your muscle. Oh so no. You, yeah. So your muscle is not just to help move your body. It's also the reservoir of amino acids mm -hmm. for all the other parts of your body. Because like, you can't just like not like if you know, the proteins in your heart need to be turned over. So they start breaking down and they try to rebuild. There's not enough amino acids. It's not like you can't just like not rebuild the heart tissue, but right, right. you can spare maybe some proteins from, from your bicep. And so you start breaking down the muscles, the muscle proteins, the tissue there to help supply. All the muscle I spent all that time on building is now being taken. Is yes, that what you're saying? That's what I'm oh, saying. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> So ideally, you are consuming protein or essential amino acids every few hours. And if you consume protein, what happens is your body digests it, it breaks it down into the little amino acids, it puts it into your blood, and then, you're, and then it gets moved to the places in your body that you need it to help rebuild those proteins. Okay. So that's, like, that's why you eat protein. That's what amino acids are. Now, when you get to the eye. And so, yeah, if you don't eat them, what will happen is you'll start to have muscle wasting ultimately. Okay. Now, I mean, it's okay. not like you can go a few hours without eating. You're, you're going to be fine. It all depends on like how often, how much and how often do you eat protein? Are you doing some type of strength training to help maintain and build your muscle? Are you doing any kind of even other types of endurance, like typical cardio training, which can still train your muscles, but then also combining it with enough subsequent protein feeding to, you know, help, help them rebuild. Mm -hmm. Um, then like you can go a few hours. It's not like you're going to waste away, but 
if you right. uh, the older you get, the actually the bigger the issue it becomes. Okay. Um, you know, if you were 65, 70, I would say, yeah, every few hours you should take essential amino acids or eat protein. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, because at that age, it's that much harder to maintain your muscle. So now getting to, well, like, why would this be important for a vegan? So, you know, outside the conversation around, um, all the different reasons why someone may choose to be vegan, whether it's, you know, ethical for, for climate reasons or animal reasons, or simply because you just like, you don't like animal proteins. There's so many different, you know, I think legitimate reasons to choose to be vegan, um, one of the things that does come up though, is that if you just evaluate the quality of proteins as they exist in nature and in foods that we eat, these are the steps that you're going to go through to evaluate the benefits that that protein is going to give to your body to promote okay. new protein synthesis. The first okay. thing you're going to look at is you're going to look at how digestible is it? And what I mean on a protein basis is when I eat this whole food protein, whether it's quinoa or chicken, um, my body, my digestive enzymes are going to break it down. And then there's going to be some amino acids available. Some um, foods are more or less digestible and the, the inherent amino acids become available. The mm. next thing you're going to look at is what is the composition of amino acids in that protein source? And it does tend to be that animal proteins have much higher concentrations and I'll say, quote, better proportions of essential amino acids than plant proteins do. I see. And, okay. the, re and, and the, the reason why these essential amino acids are important is because they're the ones your body can't synthesize. So actually, if you consume the nine essential amino acids, it can actually synthesize the other 11. It can produce them in, in the amounts that it needs, but it mm. can't synthesize those key nine. The other really important issue is that what we've uncovered in the last 15, 20 years is that the essential amino acids are also the, quote, active component of the protein. When you eat a protein, you're getting all these like great building blocks to help rebuild the proteins in your body. But the nine essential ones are the ones that actually communicate to the cells in your body to say, hey, let's let's start turning over the old proteins, repair them with new ones, and build new proteins. Okay, gotcha. And so you really need the essential ones to actually um, initiate and conduct the process, the protein synthesis, and they're the ones that your body can't make. So when you look at plant proteins versus animal proteins, plant proteins, other than like quinoa, buckwheat, soy, they tend to be quite deficient in essential amino acids mm -hmm. it, to a degree that on their own, they will help stimulate this protein synthesis. So you can overcome it. You can combine different types of them together, et cetera. Um, you also start to reach additional challenges of that for a different reason, but like a ribeye steak is not only high in these, in these amino acids, it's also really high in fat. So you end up getting a lot of calories if you eat a ribeye steak. So it's not like the most efficient form of getting that protein. Mm -hmm. Similarly, though, when you eat a lot of grains, they're really high in carbohydrates at the same time right. as the protein. So you end up eating a lot of calories to get the same amount of protein. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I think someone who's trying to be like an all red meat diet, you're going to have a similar, like not a similar challenge, but it's like not a great way it's to get not a good balance. Yeah, it's a very calorically efficient way to get these essential amino acids you want. But it's a similar challenge with, with some plant-based proteins that you're having to eat a lot of calories to get it. So the benefits of something like an essential amino acid supplement is that it's vegan, it's fermented from plant from plant-based materials. And uh, similar if you think kind of like the way like kombucha is fermented. Um, so from a fermentation process you're able to uh, you're able to generate these essential amino acids. You can, you can combine them in really ideal formulations, similar, even better than what you would get from an animal-based protein, but it's vegan, and it's only the essential amino acids. And so what happens is when you consume them, they maximally stimulate the protein synthesis in a way that's actually way more efficient and way better than even an animal protein, but okay. it's vegan. So in the ways in which someone who's maybe like eating an animal-based diet might be like, oh, you can't, you know be plant-based because blah, 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 like it's deficient in these essential amino acids. The first thing I'd say is like, that's actually not true. You can combine plant-based sources to get a good profile, 
But on top of that, you could say, yeah, but I also supplement with these free form essential amino acids that are right. way superior to your animal protein in terms of their ability to stimulate protein synthesis and they're vegan and they're much like lighter in my digestive system. They don't have to be digested, et cetera. So I think like that's, that's kind of like the main way that I've seen um, people on a plant-based diet choose to use essential amino acids and why. Okay. That was so well explained. I really appreciate it. Like I get it. I understand it. And I appreciate the way that you broke that down for us because I was taking them um, on a daily basis with my regular vitamin healing protocol that I do throughout my day. So now I'm thinking, and please tell me your opinion because you're the expert, I'm not, but my brain is going, all right, how about you break it up and you do a couple of shots throughout the day? Cause I've got four flavors that you sent me. Thank you so much. Watermelon, mixed berry, cool lime. And my favorite, as I told you is mango, but I could be breaking those up throughout my day, I work from home. So I'm blessed to, you know, have the opportunity. I can just run to the kitchen and take some, you know, um, aminos, take some supplements anytime that I want and do that every few hours. Like, what would you recommend for someone like me who's vegan or someone who's vegetarian or someone who just is like, I know I'm not getting enough protein, whatever your diet is. You're like, I want these, essential, or I'm working out and I don't want to lose that muscle that I've just decided I'm going to build because you know, it's, you know, the holiday time, everyone on January 1st is going to join a new gym. So wherever we are, <laughs> <laughs> what would you recommend in terms of like dosing? Or, or amounts. And I know everyone might be different, but like in general for someone um, who's looking to get more of these aminos into their diet without eating more, how would you recommend them taking the Keon aminos? So I would start by saying that it's ideal to take a full serving at once. So rather okay. than like you'd like taking, and that's, that's five grams of the active essential amino acids. If you get like a powder uh, the, we also have capsules, but if you get like a flavored powder, there's going to be more total material because there's like some flavoring in it. Um, but it's yeah, five I've been taking the powder yeah. every day. Yeah. Okay. But it's five but, grams uh, of like active essential amino acids. You could go down to as low as three grams uh -huh. and still get kind of, it would stimulate new protein synthesis. But if you go below that, it's not harmful for you. It's just like not as good. It's okay. really like you, you basically want to communicate to the body like, hey, let's rebuild some proteins. And at that minimal dose of three grams is kind of like the threshold. The five gram dose is pretty ideal for most people. You could actually go all the way up to three servings, 15 grams at once. And that has a linear improvement. Like oh. all the way up to 15 grams, it actually like 15 grams is three times better than five grams. Wow. But interesting. once you start to go beyond that, it diminishes in returns. It's just like, you're not getting as much from it. No, um, so more is not better after 15. Okay. After 15 grams, more <laughs> is not, is not better. So you could take up to three servings at, at once if you were like trying to be ultimate, like ultimately optimal. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I think the best, you know, way to use it is in between First thing in the morning is a great time to take it because basically first thing in the morning, you're giving your body exactly what it wants to maintain muscle, to support neurotransmitter balance and mood regulation, uh, just like to support overall protein synthesis in your body. You've been fasting like all night, not taking right. anything in. And it's a very light, non-digestive intensive way to give your body exactly what it wants. And you, I think many people find like, wow, like my mood feels better and I have more energy kind of for the rest of the day by kickstarting my day that way. After that, um, you could, you could take it every few hours. Like they, the way that the way our bodies work and protein synthesis works is when you take in this kind of minimal dose of essential amino acids, either in a whole food protein or in a supplement like Keon aminos, you kickstart this process of, of protein synthesis. It lasts two to four hours. Okay. Kind of depending on, there's a lot of uh, variability in that, depending on your body size, type, level of activity, et cetera. And so taking it more frequently than that is not going to have, again, as much of a benefit, but taking it every few hours, you're basically going to be optimally stimulating protein synthesis. If you're eating um, a really high protein meal, like maybe it's, it's not, it's actually beneficial because it's going to, it's going to ensure because the essential amino acids are the part that, that actually communicate to conduct the new protein synthesis. It's going to ensure that the protein in that meal is utilized actually primarily for new protein synthesis and less of it is going to go to waste because okay. some goes to waste and it gets converted into sugars actually. 
So okay. in protein that you eat. So it's going to like optimize that. But also if you're in between meals and you're not like really hungry, but you've got a craving, you'll find that similar to the way that protein curbs cravings, essential amino acids, it's amazing how much they can wow. curb cravings in between meals and just give you this kind of like elevated mood without caffeine or sugar or like all these other more like drug like fixes. Yeah. Um, so I think basically awesome first thing in the morning, awesome to curb cravings in between meals. It can be used during uh, meals themselves to optimize the protein intake. And that could be okay. if it's a lower protein meal or even if it's a regular protein meal. And then before, during, and after exercise are all great times to take them. If you take them before exercise, you will basically multiply the benefits of the exercise. You wow. will increase the amount of protein synthesis. So increase the replacement of muscle fibers with new healthier ones. You will improve um, your muscular endurance. You won't get fatigued as quickly. You can also improve like overall like mental endurance because it reduces the amount of uh, basically like more depressive uh, amino acids getting into your brain. Tryptophan, mm -hmm. which converts into serotonin and it makes you feel like more tired. Um, mm -hmm. so it can, it can keep you with an elevated mood and, um, so it's excellent for that. Taking it during is similar and taking it after is really ideal for recovery. So it's one of those things that's like, they actually recent study from, uh, kind of meta analysis from the international society of sports nutrition has shown that up to a hundred grams of supplemental essential amino acids per day is safe. So that'd be like okay. 20 servings a day. So wow. you can't really yeah. overdo it. Um, and so in the end, after I give all those examples, it's like, where does it fit best into your life? You know, it's like, if it's the kind of thing where, yeah, I have like these cravings mid afternoon, but I'm like not really hungry, but I also want to make sure I like maintain my muscle and maintain my mood. Maybe that's the time to use it. If you're looking for like the right way to kickstart your morning and just start off with a good mood, that's a good time to use it. Um, if it's like all of those and exercise, then that's also, you know, fine. You're not, you're not going to overdo it. Right. It okay. is such a core nutrient. It's not like this, it's not some kind of like novel, new, weird supplement. <laughs> it's it's a core nutrient that your body wants. Yeah, like the supplements that make you buzz all day and you're like, I don't know what to do. It's like worse than a coffee buzz and I hate those supplements that make yeah. me feel like like that. And, I, and I've been on this for, I believe, about a month or just over a month now. I'm not exactly sure. And um, I'll share with you my experience, which is interesting based on what you just said, because um, I have been taking it in the morning and I have been taking the five. Now I know I might be doing three times five throughout my day. And I like that because I am also on a new workout program. And I want to talk to you about muscle building um, in a second, but I'll share with you my experience and then we can go there. So I am, it's almost my birthday. Actually, by the time this episode airs, I, it will have been my birthday and I'll be on my birthday trip to Bermuda. But <laughs> what Fine. I decided, yeah, thank you. I got back um, from, an, I got back from LA and I was like, um, I had um, gained a little weight because I was eating all the food because I was there working on a, um, a, a film project and those are like 12 to 14 hour days. And so there was no workouts and I was eating because they have the best vegan restaurants in LA. I was eating all the food because I'd been there in a while. <laughs> so I get home and I was like, all right, girl, you have a month and a half until your birthday and you want to look the best you've ever looked at this age, which I'm not even going to tell you uh, because no one knows because everyone thinks I'm younger and I'm just going to go with that. <laughs> Anyways, so I was like, I'm going to look as good as possible. I got my Keon Aminos and I have been taking them before my workouts and I'm focusing primarily on muscle building. That's how personally I am able to um, lean out and lose weight more quickly. I found is through muscle building over cardio. That's just my personal experience. And I have a little bit of syncope, which means that I tend to um, get I, I tend to pass out in um, high situations of cardio. Anyways, long story short. So I have been doing the workouts in the morning. So I've been doing the Keanu Minos first. And like, I went back to an old workout that I used to do. And I was like, oh, it's been a while. This is going to be really hard. It's going to take you a while to work up even to those 10 pound weights. And I was pleasantly surprised, Angelo, at how quickly my body went right back into, oh, you know how to do this workout. It's just sets of exercises. I have arms and abs and legs and 
booty, you know, it's just sets of exercises that I used to do about two years ago, haven't done in a while. And I got back into it. My body adapted so quickly. And based on everything you just said, it sounds like those aminos might have been part of the reason that that was easy to fall back into to get my body back. And now I'm back on it and I'm working out every day so I can have that beach body, which is in two weeks. But when this episode airs, I'll be there so we can see if I post it on on Instagram. Uh, But uh, would you say that that helps our bodies with getting back into shape if it's been a while or, or we've taken some time off from working out, from exercising, from muscle building? Keon Aminos are excellent way to make it easier to start exercising again. And even if you've already been exercising a lot, they're going to make exercise feel easier. And the reason for that is because when you exercise, you are breaking down proteins. You're breaking down muscle. Mm -hmm. Uh, No matter what kind of exercise you're doing, whether it's cardio or it's strength training. And when you do that, the body wants and needs these essential amino acids to help rebuild those proteins. And when you deprive it of that, you naturally are increasing the sense of muscle fatigue. And so if you just like, you're trying to exercise, you're trying to do more and your muscles are getting tired, well, like naturally you're going to, it's going to feel harder. (laughs) So (laughs) you want it to feel easier, like just give it this raw nutrient. Um, And then you know, in terms of uh, cardio actually, which is, you know, not what you spoke to, when you do really intense, like high intensity training for an extended amount of time, mm-hmm. it's not just that your, you know, your muscles are being strained. You actually utilize amino acids from your blood, but at the level of the muscle itself to help facilitate the process of converting those carbs into ATP. So okay. you oxidize amino acids at this really high rate, not not as the primary fuel source, but as like the conductor, the facilitator of that process. And mm-hmm. so suddenly you need even more essential amino acids in your blood, because if you don't get them, again, what happens is actually you provoke more muscle breakdown because your your blood needs, needs to keep this constant pool of the amino acids to then send back to your muscle to help facilitate the, uh, the conversion of the glucose into ATP. So they're really incredible for like more endurance type activities as well. Um, so yeah, big picture, like if you're, whether you're already training or you're trying to get back into it and you want to make it easier, Keon aminos are an excellent idea. They're the first thing I would think of taking. Yeah. I was literally like, wait, this is so much easier than I thought coming back into it's, it's just an app on my phone, but I, it's a very hard um, workout for me. And I got back into it much more quickly than I anticipated. And I was like, Hey, this is great. And now based on what you're saying, the only thing I had changed was you had sent me the aminos. <laughs> so <laughs> interesting. Hmm. Yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible. You know, w- one thing I, I want to highlight just because we're talking about it, uh, specifically on exercises, some people, if you start looking or thinking about like aminos with exercise, people may have been exposed to, or you may, if you're like searching out brands, you may see something called branch chain amino acids or BCAAs, which are okay. one form of aminos. I would just say the short thing I'd say is stay away from them. Okay. <laughs> and the reason why is because there are only three of the nine essential amino acids. And the research has shown extensively, conclusively that they do not work on their own. They do not contribute to muscle building on their own. You must have all nine, not just the three. It's old research that had shown and that we used to think that maybe the three on their own could work and they don't. So it's like, it's a total waste of your money. Don't spend your money on BCAAs or branch chain amino acids. And on a similar note, if you're out there researching, um, like you really need one and I, I'm trying to come at this from like an educational perspective. Like, obviously I like Keon Aminos and we followed all the science and all the research to make what we think is the most ideal product that, that follows really the way the body works and, and that the full understanding of the scientific community up until now um, For sure. is like, you need to have all nine essential amino acids and you really need to have them. You want to make sure that the company tells you exactly how much of each one you're getting. Because it matters. Okay. As I talked about earlier with like the difference between different plant proteins and animal proteins, you can't just have any amount of each one. It's it's very specific proportions. So make sure they tell you how much is in it. You can see it. It doesn't say like proprietary formula for the amino acids. And then okay. after that, 
you really want you want the formula that is in Keon Aminos. And um, so you can look at that if you you know choose not. To, I would just say obviously get Keon Aminos. But if if you're not, if you're trying to you know figure something else out, like you need to have these proportions. And those proportions are based off of again all the best science, which shows you need the proportions of amino acids as they exist in human skeletal muscle. So like if literally you measured the muscle in your body, what would it be? You then increase the leucine to be 40%. You increase the isoleucine, the valine to match the original proportions. And you increase the lysine because it's slower to get into the muscle tissue. And if you don't have it, it the, simply the formula won't work as well. These are like the conclusions, again, of studies for NASA, the NIH, like so many repeated demonstrated studies. And wow. um, just make sure you're getting like the legit formula um, because otherwise it's not necessarily going to create the benefits that we're talking about here. Everything that I'm describing here is based off of research around this formula. So I guess, you know, one part of your story that we didn't get to is explaining how you decided to found this company and then how, yeah, you decided like, okay, I'm going to formulate differently. I'm going to do it right. Because unfortunately we know there are many supplement companies, just like there are drug companies who are making garbage products that are just out for the bottom dollar. And I interview people such as yourself who are out to help us get healthier and really change our lives and change the world. So talk to me a little bit about the founding of the company and the ethics behind it. And um, yeah, shameless self-promotion, honestly, just go for it. <laughs> I mean, um, it really just comes down to like, it's funny, someone's gonna make fun of myself. I basically like, I think unconsciously made the company that like my, you know, five-year-old Angie's mom would have thought was cool. <laughs> like, you know, you know, like I, yeah, I like to think it's some kind of like strategic thing, but you know, I was just like given these values around food and nutrition and supplements at this really young age. And I went off, you know, as I grew up and explored, you know, after all that trauma stuff I described earlier, like I, I went off and explored a lot of different career stuff. I lived overseas in France and Spain and India for many years and came back to the U S and, um, we're in a behavioral healthcare company for a few years that focused on really helping actually like troubled youth, people very similar to myself. And, mm -hmm. you know, at the, as things kind of transitioned into my next phase, I just, I don't know how to say it. Like I wound up back being focused on the types of products slash solutions that were really important to like me and my family. And yeah. when you think about, and I would just encourage everyone to think about this, like if you can, um, with your career and with your work, if you can do a business, like, what do you really care about? Like, what do you like? What's, what's a, what's a product or a service that you really want part of your life? And then just dedicate yourself to that. Um, because yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity, particularly in the supplement space of like trying to do something like really fancy and new and ah, there's like this one new study that came out that disproves everything that came before, because it, mm -hmm. that, that sounds like cool marketing information. Um, and to be totally honest, like essential amino acids are one of those things that have been studied so much, hundreds of studies. Yeah. <laughs> it's not this like new, shiny, yeah. fancy thing. It's, it's just like been proven over and over and over and over and over and over to, pe to be beneficial to people. And so yeah. like, that's the kind of, that's the kind of product I want to make and I want to be part of, and I want to give to my kids and to my family and my friends. And I want to take every day. And then it's like, okay, well, what would be the best version of that? So you hire really smart scientists to help do a review of all the scientific literature and uh, to help organize it and synthesize it. And you get a smart team of people and you debate it and you look at it and be like, yeah, like this. And, you know, why these amounts? Why not those amounts? How this work? Well, was that with the same population as, you know, like as who we are? Um, is it really going to be good for everyone? You just... You just take an approach of trying to make something that's going to be really good for yourself and the people you care about, and you just make that. Absolutely. And that's why I really enjoy interviewing founders such as yourself who come at it from this perspective. And Food Heals Nation, you can get your aminos with our exclusive discount from Angelo. It's just for you. You can save 20% off at Get Kion dot com slash food heals get keon k-i-o-n dot com slash food heals but angelo before we wrap up can i get two more questions yeah let's do it okay great so speaking of um muscle building and aminos and that whole relationship 
one thing that all of us at Food Heals Nation are passionate about is living our longest, strongest, healthier lives. Sometimes I don't like the word anti-aging because I'm not trying to reverse my age, but I am trying to stay energetic and vibrant and beautiful and happy as long as possible. So talk to me a little bit about how these aminos are kind of the building blocks for and and for muscles and how mus- having uh, muscles and building muscles actually does keep us our genetic age younger. So starting at age 30 and every decade after that, it becoming only more important, I would prioritize muscle building Muscle maintenance. I'm not saying like getting jacked, <laughs> just like right, having right. good, healthy, thank, lean no, muscle you on your body. That. Yeah. Okay. Um, and and honestly, taking essential amino acids as a primary supplement to do that because it is so directly tied to positive health outcomes. Not in terms of living the longest life, um, but in terms of living the best long life. So when mm-hmm. you look at um, Actually, it's all it's all people, but older folks particularly, and survival rates of cancer. The more muscle mass you have going into it is directly correlated to survival rates. When oh, you look I at having it. healthier metabolic health, because muscle is actually what helps you regulate your blood sugar, and I think a lot of people don't realize that. Like muscle is one of the primary uh, ways of doing that. Um, when you look at the ability to stay active, to continue exercising, which is a which is a key element of maintaining. Um, overall health as you age, but especially mental health. Like if you can't, if you can't get out and go for a walk or go for a run or move, you like it dramatically in, in, in you know, it's detrimental to your mental health. The ability yes. to avoid injury. You just imagine the more frail you are and the less trained your muscles are, it seems crazy, you know, if you're in your thirties, forties, fifties, but when you go to try to stand up quickly, it can get pretty hard in your 60s, 70s, 80s. And the more that you have well-trained and good, solid, lean muscle mass, you're going to be able to do that and you're going to avoid falling down and getting injured. And when you get injured or when you have some type of disease, which is going to happen to all of us at some point in our life, what happens is your body does not prioritize building or maintaining muscle Mm -hmm. because it's just trying to survive. And you also have even less appetite. And so what happens is you start to break down your muscle at an even higher rate than you normally would to supply the rest of your body with the amino acids that it needs to maintain organ function, to maintain all the basic processes of your body. So you really got to think about muscle, not just as a way to like, you know, look good now in Bermuda, which is a great (laughs) reason. That is a great reason to want to have muscle. I need short-term goals, man. I need them. It's good. That's a great one. I mean, like, why not? And the thing that, but it's not just that. It's also something you're investing in long-term to maintain good metabolic health, to not get hurt when you get older, to be able to like have a reservoir of amino acids for when you get injured at some point so you don't just waste away. It's like, I I can't emphasize anything more than than trying to maintain muscle. And so it's like, okay, well then why essential amino acids? Well, this is this is one of the things we didn't get into as much earlier because we were really focused on like the plant-based diet thing more. But as we age, our ability to break down proteins of any kind becomes more diminished mm-hmm. and our sensitivity to the amino acids to stimulate new protein synthesis, to say like, hey, let's build more muscle and let's rebuild these proteins in our organs, et cetera, it decreases. Because it's simply not, it's your body, like lots of other parts of our body, it just, you're just not as good at it anymore. And it, it starts to decrease in, in efficacy. So for someone who's like 20 years old, who takes key on aminos, takes some essential amino acids, it's going to have about twice the impact of protein synthesis as a really quality whole food protein. Wow. The reason for that is because it's only that active component of the protein. It's all essential amino acids. But yeah, it's going to be at least twice, if not three times as much. By the time you're 40, it's going to be like four times the impact. By the time you're 55, by the time you're 60, did a study on women in their 60s, it's over six times the impact of a whey protein isolate, which is a very high quality uh, protein. The reason for that is because our bodies simply, they don't digest the protein as well as we get older. And we're not as sensitive to the essential amino acids in them. So when you just take the free form essential amino acid supplement, it doesn't have to be digested. It's formulated in the ideal proportions to stimulate the new protein synthesis. And so it overcomes that kind of 
uh, degradation of the natural body systems that occur as we get older. So definitely prioritize building muscle and maintaining muscle as you age. And you're like, if you're not at the age yet, everyone's going to start to realize it gets harder and harder as you get older. Yeah. And essential amino acids are like the most direct, easy supplement to add to help maintain that muscle as you age. Well, I'm sold. I'm a fan. I appreciate you taking the time today to break it down for us. I really have a better understanding of it after this conversation. And I'm with you. I know that movement is medicine. And I think it is absolutely essential to us for all of the facets of our lives in terms of whether it's anti-aging or feeling better every day on just preventing disease in general. And so movement combined with these aminos, I feel like is a really important healing tool for everyone to have in their healing toolbox over the holidays and beyond. Yes, we set, we set short-term goals as I did uh, the last month and a half, but I also, my long-term goal is to live long and strong and healthy and live to a hundred and beyond. You know, I just interviewed a guy, uh, Angelo, and his goal is to live to 500. And I'm like, anything is possible, you know, <laughs> at this point. And so I really appreciate you coming on today. Last question. What's your favorite flavor of all the aminos that you sell at getkeon.com slash food heals? It's a tough one. I don't want to like move anyone towards my side because I, I think this is one of the things I've learned like, wow, taste is so subjective. Some people are just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I'm hardcore berry. It's the best. Like I'm watermelon. I, I'm a big, I'm a big mango fan and a lime fan. Lime is like the least sweet, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, it's kind of nice. And I, and I like, I'll actually sometimes, um, I'm not really a drinker, but like, if I want to have like a mocktail, which this is a super healthy use of aminos. No, that's actually, exactly what I was going to say. The lime tastes exactly like a mocktail that I drink at Soho House. Exactly. Yeah. You can like mix up the lime aminos and then I'll put some extra lime juice in there and pour it in a glass with like salt on the rim. And it's like, yes. it's killer, um, which is a great alternative to whatever else I might choose to drink at dinner, <laughs> you know? Yes. Um, I love that. Uh, mango though, just like taste. I didn't think I like, and I'm not like a huge mango person. I mean, I like mangoes, but yeah. it's so good. I, I, I crush it. I go, I do kickboxing and like, I crush it in my Muay Thai kickboxing. I just I love <laughs> it. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I love the mango. It's my favorite. Um, and I can't believe you said that about the lemon, li uh, the lime, because that's what I thought. I thought it tastes exactly like this mocktail that I get frequently. Um, it's just a light, easy flavor, easy to drink with food or without. Um, so I really appreciate that. Um, all right. So, um, Angelo, everything, like we said, you can get 20% off at getkeon.com slash food heals. Where else can they follow you, stalk you, find you online, all that good stuff? Um, I mean, really, I've poured everything into, into Keon. So we have a bunch of other great resources at getkeon.com in terms of like blogs and education information. We're on Instagram. Um, but yeah, just look for Keon. Perfect. Well, thanks again so much for being here. Thanks, Allison. All right. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Angelo. I certainly learned a lot. I hope you did too. Again, if you want to get your Keon on, your Keon supplements, your Keon aminos and taste all those tasty flavors that Angelo and I spoke about today, you can go to getkeon.com slash foodheals to save 20% off your aminos. Again, that's over at getkeon.com slash foodheals. See you next time, Food Heals Nation, and cheers to your good health. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to actually start using their $39.99 a month gym membership. If you experience any of these symptoms, Snapchat your trainer immediately.